For decades, the island of Oahu in Hawaii has suffered from terrible traffic congestion, especially in the crowded corridor connecting the eastern suburbs to the capital city of Honolulu. After years of proposals and false starts, the island has finally opened the first segment of a brand new, fully automated rapid transit system. This rail line, called the Skyline, represents a pioneering achievement as the first ever grade four autonomous mass transit system in the United States. Built by an international consortium led by Hitachi Rail, Skyline aims to significantly reduce traffic and emissions while providing residents and visitors with a modern, convenient transportation option. The completion of phase one of the project opens nine stations over 11 miles of track, with further extensions to come in the next few years. Once fully complete, Skyline will transform mobility around Oahu and serve as a model for other American cities considering investing in autonomous public transit. For many decades, the main option for traveling around the Hawaiian island of Oahu was driving personal vehicles on the highway system. But increased population growth and tourism led to unbearable congestion, especially on the vital east-west corridor between suburban Kapole and urban Honolulu. Pre-pandemic, Oahu commuters wasted an average of 58 hours per year stuck in traffic during peak hours, the third worst rate in the nation. Attempts to add more freeway lanes did little to alleviate the constant gridlock. Traffic would simply increase to fill the new capacity. Specific problem areas included the H1 corridor between the airport and downtown, which could see average speeds drop below 10 miles per hour during the worst congestion. The indirect highway routing and lack of alternative paths meant even minor incidents like fender benders or breakdowns would trigger massive delays rippling outward. And the sprawling suburban growth on Oahu's west side led to rising commuter volumes from bedroom communities like Kapole into downtown Honolulu. Clearly, an alternative was desperately needed to get commuters off congested roads. Expanding the bus system was not a true solution, as buses still sat in the same terrible traffic. A separate right-of-way for high-capacity trains promised a way to give residents and visitors a fast, reliable transit option. Surveys showed strong public support for investments to reduce roadway congestion. Various urban planning studies recommended improved transit to limit sprawl and create more walkable, livable communities. Pro-transit advocates argued rail would promote healthier lifestyles and benefit the environment. Unfortunately, previous attempts to build rail transit systems for Oahu ended in failure. But the worsening traffic finally forced political leaders to take decisive action in the 2000s. With congestion choking economic activity and quality of life, it became unacceptable to just keep adding highway lanes. An alternative was desperately needed. While railroads were common on Hawaii's islands in the late 1800s for shipping cargo, those systems were discontinued decades ago. A few limited tourist rails continued operating, but general public transit railways did not exist. So for years, Honolulu debated investing in a new rapid transit system. The island actually had a greater metro network in the past than it does today. Hawaiian Railways operated public transportation around Honolulu starting in 1888, using both steam and electric trams. Ridership remained strong into the 20th century, but as roads improved and private autos gained popularity, the system was ultimately shut down in 1941. Other lines primarily for agricultural transportation also closed over this period. In 1967, a first effort to build a new rail system failed after a tax to fund construction was struck down. In the 1990s, Honolulu proposed an elevated rail system very similar to the current skyline, but 
it did not move forward after losing political momentum. Opposition came from both citizens who thought rail was unnecessary and too expensive, as well as the airlines and tourism industry, which worried about the impacts on travel and development. Without solid financing or consensus around alignments and stations, the project foundered. It seemed Honolulu would remain completely car dependent. Public sentiment finally reached a tipping point as congestion worsened after 2000. Multiple feasibility studies were conducted and cost benefit analysis analyses were improved. A referendum authorizing a general excise tax to finance construction of a rail line narrowly passed citywide in 2008. The political leadership strongly championed the effort. After many false starts over decades, circumstances finally aligned to approve moving forward with Honolulu's ambitious rail transit project. But significant challenges still lay ahead to translate plans into operational reality. Right from the start, the Skyline project faced numerous issues and controversies that put construction far behind schedule. Even after previous transit proposals failed to materialize, the timeline set in 2008 for the approved system was extremely optimistic. Federal funding requirements mandated completing a comprehensive environmental impact review process. Ensuring the elevated guideway avoided negatively impacting culturally important sites required extensive surveying and consideration of alternative paths. Lawsuits were filed disputing the thoroughness of these archaeological assessments, stalling progress. Design changes were also required after the initial plans failed to provide adequate clearance from overhead power lines in certain sections. Moving these utilities to accommodate the skyline cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Fabricating the sheer quantity of customized precast concrete segments needed for the extensive elevated viaduct proved challenging. Hawaii had limited experience with advanced infrastructure manufacturing. Shipping massive bridge supports across the Pacific was not quick or easy either. Once construction finally commenced, cracks were discovered in 2013 in the critical pier supports for the guideway. Officials claimed these were harmless shrinkage cracks in the concrete, but independent engineering assessments determined they could represent a major structural deficiency. Additional cracks kept forming over subsequent years. It became clear that these issues stemmed from fundamental design flaws rather than harmless shrinkage. Extensive remediation was required to reinforce the piers and prevent cracks from spreading, putting the project years behind schedule. The automated train control integration also dragged on as safety certifications took longer than planned. Poor alignment of train wheels and tracks further delayed testing. Each setback required time-consuming reworking and pushed completion dates further and further back. Like most major infrastructure projects, the original timeline failed to appreciate the inevitability of unexpected complications arising. The many engineering challenges and construction delays set the stage for Skyline to open over a decade past its initial target. Despite the delays, the completed first phase of Skyline represents an impressive engineering accomplishment. Here are some key details. Elevated guideway. Over 5,000 precast concrete segments form an elevated viaduct to avoid conflicts with existing infrastructure below. This allows for faster construction compared to trenching or tunneling. Automated operation. Using Hitachi's advanced train control systems, Skyline is the first North American metro line to operate at grade for Go A4 autonomy without any onboard crew. This improves efficiency and safety. Smooth rides. Special vibration dampening technologies keep motion smooth and comfortable for passengers. Accessibility. Level platform boarding and plenty of space for wheelchairs, strollers, bikes, and luggage make Skyline accessible to all riders. Sustainability. Electrically powered trains will eliminate 40,000 car trips daily, reducing greenhouse gas emissions phased opening. The first 11-mile segment from East Capole to Aloha Stadium opened in June 2023, with further extensions in progress. While only partially open, Skyline is already benefiting life around Oahu. 
On opening day, over 9,000 residents enthusiastically rode the metro, enjoying quick journeys not possible by car or bus. When complete, the fully driverless system will transport passengers swiftly and smoothly across 20 stations, over 30 kilometers between Kapole and downtown Honolulu. Trains arriving every three minutes during peak periods will eliminate 40,000 car trips daily, cutting emissions and finally relieving congestion substantially. In addition to benefiting commuters, Skyline links key destinations like the international airport, stadiums, and shopping centers. It will also promote transit-oriented development around stations. By pioneering autonomous grade 4 operations, Skyline puts Honolulu on the map as a transit innovator. When finished, it will be the most advanced rapid transit system in the country. Skyline proves that American cities can successfully build and operate automated metros, following the lead of places like Copenhagen, Milan, and Singapore, where such systems are common. As more U.S. cities pursue sustainable mobility initiatives, Skyline stands as an inspirational model to follow. No major infrastructure project is without critics and detractors, but Skyline has the potential to transform mobility around Oahu for generations to come. The completion of the first phase represents a major milestone in providing residents and visitors with quick, convenient, and sustainable transit choices. For over a century, Hawaii existed without urban rapid transit, aside from a few historical freight railways. But the opening of the Skyline system ushers in a new era of mobility on Oahu. Despite construction delays, this project persevered to finally provide an alternative to congested highways. Skyline sets the standard for American metros with pioneering autonomous technology, demonstrating that efficient, sustainable public transit can succeed in the U.S. The initial segment in operation is just the start, as extensions to more stations continue construction over the coming decade.